Hello! This is Mr. Axbane, and this is devlog number three for my solo dev project, Project Rust Storm. I'm going to do my playtesting for today, and uh, while I do that, I'll show you new stuff that's in the game as it comes up through play. And this time, for a little bit of fun, I'm actually going to try Hell Mode, which may be interesting because it's kind of difficult to talk about concepts sometimes while also paying attention to the game as fully as I would when I'm not having to talk at the same time. So I may have a little trouble with this, but that's fun. I'll probably take speed. Oh, there's a new, this is one new thing. You can pick a background now, and there's ten different backgrounds, and they actually give you small gameplay benefits. Uh, there's artist, bodyguard, cook, courier, I think I said that wrong, engineer, farmer, mech pilot, merchant, raider, and a scientist. I'll probably be an artist, because actually, uh, I was an artist before I ever did any design, really. I, I kind of identify more as an artist than a designer or a game maker, even though I'm making games now, I guess. Uh, <laughs> feels crazy I'm making games. Alright, so, also I'm going to try something different, maybe, and be uh, a guardian, uh, just to try a different class. Uh, and then, actually, I might not do speed because of that. Let's see, what else would go good here? Actually, I will do speed, yeah, because I'll be kind of slow otherwise. Speed's a pretty good option. I like speed. And actually, Artist gives you a little bit of speed as well, partly because I couldn't... I had trouble thinking of uh, more gameplay benefits to give Artist in this game. It was a little easier for the other ones to come up with, but... Alright, and then I'll probably start with a cyber deck. Yeah, yeah. I like to do that. So in addition to doing some playtesting and showing you the new elements as they come up, in this devlog I'm also going to talk about two topics. The different kinds of secrets that you can find in video games, and the difference between an alpha test and a beta test. Now, I thought that that, that latter one, the difference between alpha and beta, I thought that was... I thought I already knew what that was. It's just like, obviously, you have like a prototype, and then you have uh, an alpha stage, alpha test, you know, whether it's open or closed, and then the same thing with a beta test, and then at some point you release, although a lot of modern games, let's be honest, kind of, they kind of just push out the last beta test and call it a release, but that's a whole other topic, a whole other topic. Anyway, that's the second topic. Oh, more new stuff to get out. There's people in the game now, like human beings. This one said, hey, check back with me another time and I might have a mission for you. This guy and also this one can give you, uh, different tips. They, they don't give you a mission, though. And then this person here will actually give you a mission from the start. Hi, listen, I have a mission for you, and I'll send you 2,400 credits if you can complete it. It will require a bit of traveling, though. Your mission is to travel through Red Dust City, into Crimson Forest, and find a secret shop. And then you can choose to accept it or not. There's this little dialogue that pops up. This is the first custom dialogue I've added. I've had custom uh, HUD elements and stuff, but this is the first, like, custom pop-up dialogue. This is cool, because now I can do more stuff where you have multiple choices of things to do. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this mission. Thank you, and as soon as you find the location of the shop, I'll send you those 2,400 creds. Now, I might not actually go to the shop this devlog, but I wanted to show you guys that. There's only two missions in the game, but there's a very simple mission system. So now, I've taken that mission, and currently there's no journal or mission tracker that will tell you. But, when you are in the area for a specific mission, there'll be a little pop-up on the bottom left that'll tell you what your mission objective is again. So, And if you go back and talk to the person, they usually will tell you what they needed you to do. So it's... And eventually I'll probably add, or almost surely, I'll add some kind of mission tracker. Uh, let's see, which gun should I start with? Um, oh, actually, i got to do this one on hell mode. I don't have enough money to buy the other one. <laughs> or I would, but I wouldn't be able to get any ammo or anything. Pocket alert meter. Oh, I'd love to get that, but I can't afford that upgrade. Okay, so for the first actual uh, game dev type topic, the different types of secrets in video games. I wanted to talk about this topic because, you know, that's also something that seems pretty straightforward. Like, you know, some games have secrets, some games don't. And usually they'll tell you how many secrets you found, if you know, on the level or whatever. That's the old school way, right? Uh, and a lot of modern games just don't have secrets at all. Most games, it seems, don't really have them. Uh, which makes sense, actually, for a lot of different types of games. They're not, they, they, don't, they don't really fit in every game design, for sure. But I'm kind of making them a more old school game in a way, so uh, I think they'll fit in here. So, 
what do I mean by the different types? Well, there's no, you know, like, actual consensus. This is just based on me and my own thoughts and the thoughts that came to me while working on this game and actually the previous game project uh, that I was working on. So, you know, at first thought, it's like, what different kinds of secrets? Well, there's secrets and there's not secrets. I mean, what do you mean? There's really, like, one kind. Well, that's what I, you know, kind of thought. And then as I was developing, I realized, eh, there's kind of a lot of different ways you can do secrets, and therefore there's a lot of different kinds of secrets that you could have, assuming a game even has any. And for me, just for my own purposes, I came up with three terms for it. Secrets, semi-secrets, and mega-secrets. And this may help you if you ever develop a game, or if you're currently developing a game, or even if you just play games, and, you know, it'll give you context to think about the kinds of games you play, and maybe terms to talk about, you know, uh, those, those types of secrets in those games. Maybe even to request from developers that you really love, if they're asking for feature requests, you know, some of these types of things. Alright, so a basic secret, or just a secret. These are the ones that I think of as, like, the classic, simple, first-person shooter type of secret. Something from, like, Doom, where it's usually kind of hard to find. Even if you're actively looking, an average player might only find, like, one or two of them, even though there might be four or five per level. They're usually going to give you some kind of reward, but it can be whatever you want for that game. Uh, but it's something that's kind of hard to find, and, importantly, the way I think of it, it tells you explicitly when you find one. Uh, I'm not saying that you have to do it this way or anything. I'm talking about just if you think of how to categorize them. Those classic secrets were done that way. Like, they would seem, it would be like, uh, you found a secret area, or you discovered a secret. And, uh, so that's what I think of as, a, as a, just a regular secret. Then there will be semi-secrets. And a semi-secret, actually I have an example from a, another game that is a really good one, I think, uh, or for me. Um, hang on, let me take this guy. In Harat, H-R-O-T, that amazing retro FPS, literally one of the best retro FPS games I've ever played. If you guys have not played Harat, I don't know how to pronounce it properly, but it's spelled capital H-R-O-T. It's excellent, excellent game. And there's there's multiple, it has excellent pacing, excellent level design, but when I played that game, and I have still need to go back and finish it, I never actually finished the whole thing, but when I was playing that game, I recall at least one or two times where I found something that was not expressly labeled as a secret, but it absolutely felt like I found and discovered something, but wasn't quite as hard to find as a traditional secret. And one of them was actually at the end of a level, the way to, to progress to the next level. Uh, I actually, I didn't, I, I rarely get lost in that game. I momentarily might not be sure where I want or need to go, but uh, oh, I was a little bit lost. Uh, I think, or at least it took me a little bit. Like I say, that, I, that game's amazing at, at, at making you not really get lost, or at least when I played it, but you almost do, you know. So it's like, it's kind of perfect. But there was a point where I was like, not sure how to get to the next part of the, you know, to the next stage. And when I found it, it definitely felt like I had discovered a secret. And it was satisfying, and it wasn't that hard to find. Uh, but it wasn't labeled as a secret. Uh, unless I, maybe I missed the message or something, you know. <laughs> anyway. A semi-secret is kind of cool to me, because when you put these in your games, it's essentially just something you can find off the beaten path. Right? So that's not even really a secret, truly. Uh, it, but it kind of is, you know? And it depends on the type of game you're making. It will not make sense at all in a lot of different game designs. But when you're, if you're making games and you're putting something in the game, and you realize, or maybe from playtesting, you get feedback from playtesters that they're having trouble finding a certain thing, or they... You know, they don't... A lot of people are not discovering a certain weapon that you thought was going to be pretty easy to find, right? Well, you accidentally create a semi-secret. You didn't maybe intend to create a secret, but you've got a, something like a secret now that's that feels like a discovery because, it, oops, it was a little too hard to find. And then you'll probably have a lot of things, unless you have a very, very linear, straightforward game or a different type of game entirely where you don't really explore. But when you're placing something that's that's a little bit harder to find off the beaten path... You can do that intentionally, obviously, but maybe make them a little easier to find than an old-school, traditional secret. And typically, these it wouldn't tell you you found a secret. You would just get that nice, satisfying feeling of feeling like you discovered something. You found a little secret here, a little bit of ammo, or... Oh gosh, I'm getting low on health, which... Well, I got plenty of ammo, but I don't have a lot of health. 
I gotta get I gotta get to that nearest town. There's one over the, over this way. Oh boy. Now, the third type of secret. A mega secret. Now these are fun because when I was adding secrets to my my game, uh, especially my previous game project, Rust Mecha, I remember like getting really, really excited, and I did have a lot of fun with uh, making like secret levels. I didn't make a whole lot, but I made like one or two. But that would be something like a mega secret. That's something where it's, okay, it's a secret, it's either half of a level or, you know, it doesn't have to be a secret level at all, but it's something that is a pretty big deal and is a secret and probably is expressly labeled as a secret. But you don't have to do that either, I guess. But that's actually, actually probably should, though, if you're making a game because if someone comes to a level that's a secret level uh, but they think it's the regular level, they might their expectations might not match with what they find because you might have some off the beat or off beat kind of like enemy encounters or the enemy numbers are different so you actually probably should tell them that, that there's a secret there but mega secrets are pretty fun you know you got mega secrets uh, like in the uh, uh, Super Mario Brothers game like even the original right you had the warp zones like that's ki another kind of mega secret that I think is really cool a way to potentially skip through the game or alter your path through the game through the levels through some sort of hidden secret room or wherever or whatever that lets them warp to other places so mega secrets are actually the most fun I mean they gotta be the most fun they're gonna require more work if, if you're a game maker and you're trying to make them but uh, man they'd be worth it probably for a lot of different types of games I think unless it's a game that you don't feel has should have secrets at all I mean like I say a lot of games just it just doesn't fit uh, I better get some armor repair. Yeah, and I probably need some of that. And I really would love to upgrade. Oh, I've got some money, too. Okay, I should either buy another weapon or upgrade. Oh, here's one more new item. There's heavy armor. Also, I adjusted it so that medium armor no longer slows you down. Uh, light and medium just give you, you know, smaller amounts of armor. And then heavy gives you a nice boost of armor, like plus 20 or something. Um, but it does slow you down a bit. Oh, and you have to have a certain armor rating. Let's see if I've got enough cost 10,000. Oh, I can't even buy it because of the number of credits. But you have to have a, at least a 6 armor rating, I believe. Armor skill. Um, actually, Guardian is the class I'm playing this time. And they have decent armor, so if I had the money, I probably could have got that. But, like I say, it would slow me down a little bit. So you have to decide if you really want that. Uh, let's see, Guardian. Yeah, that's one of the classes that can do some hacking. And I think I started with the Cyberdeck, yeah. So I better buy some of these, though. Let's just to show you one of the other new things. Okay, so I talked about the different types of secrets you can might find in games, according to me. I mean, that's not <laughs> that sounds egotistical, but I mean it's only useful maybe for me. I don't know the way you like the terms you use for them, the number of different kinds of secrets you might think about. For you, it might be completely different. This was just how I organized it for myself while making my games. That that kind of helps me to think about and remember, and also pay attention when I'm designing. Am I making a semi-secret where I actually don't intend it for it to be? You know that kind of thing. Alright, I'm going to try to do a successful data hack because there's something new here. Here it goes. Yeah! Now that I did the prompts, the pop-ups like for accepting a mission or not, I realized, oh, okay, hang on. Now I can do multi-choice menus, which I knew this was possible. I just honestly hadn't had the motivation yet to do this yet because it was a little bit tedious, you know? Oh, any kind of UI is more tedious than you think it's going to be. Oh, but it was totally worth it. So now you can choose which... I'll try CredBank which uh, particular robo company that you want to hack actually in the data hack terminals now there's the other type of hacking terminals that typically unlock a door those obviously don't have a choice because you're just unlocking a door but <laughs> anyway yeah so I got one I got one disk of uh, CredBank data and 700 credits from CredBank sweet I got a lot more blank disks though I only got one it's, uh, if I had better luck I'd have a better chance of getting more disks alright so I'm gonna head back out here try to survive on hell mode, which is not too difficult here in the first starting areas of the game, maybe, if you're paying attention, but, well, for new players, it will still be difficult, because they won't really know what kind of weapons and gear they maybe should, I mean, there's not really bad choices, but anyway, let's get to the second topic for this devlogue, the difference between alpha test and a beta test. So at some point, I don't remember why, but I needed to either look up the definitions of alpha and beta test, or I just came across, you know, came ac across it uh, while watching, you know, game development uh, videos on YouTube. I don't remember, but I, at some point, 
I learned the actual general definition of an alpha versus a beta. Before that, I, I thought it was just, you know, something developers would just kind of, like, gauge how far along they were, and they'd be like, well, it's kind of still alpha, you know, it's like, it's still sort of broken, you know, but, like, in beta, I mean, it can still be sort of broken, you know, it's not very clear, and I thought that they would just decide at a certain point, well, yeah, we feel comfortable calling this a beta versus, oh, or we feel comfortable calling this released now, um, which apparently it's easy to do, at, anyway. Oh, I found, a, uh... A data disk lying around. Sometimes you'll find them, not very often, but I got a Robotech disk. Sweet. Alright, um, so what is the actual difference, right? Well, first of all, really quick, I'll summarize, you know, the basic stages of development. You have something like pre, uh, pre-production, then you might have the prototype, then the alpha test, and the beta test, and then the release, right? Uh, this might be dangerous going in this area, but I'm gonna... Yeah, I'll probably, yeah, I know I probably should chill in the other place for now, especially while I'm trying to talk about this stuff a little bit easier. Alright. Hang on, let me deal with these guys. <laughs> Immediate ambush. The alert level is probably higher. Or maybe I got unlucky. Ooh, I, I'm getting unlucky. I'm gonna die. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. I gotta get out of here. Get out of here. Okay, 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 let's see if I can... Oh, no, it's over. It's over. Yeah, I, I, I could get away. That's alright, it'll start me back at when I first came into this level, which is actually just a few seconds ago, so... And it re-respawns, uh, or re regenerates the map as far as the positions for enemies, so you, you may not encounter them in the same spots as you can see when, uh, when you die and restart at the last uh, level load that you came into. Alright, so... Uh, actually, I need to I need to get back to town and reduce my radiation level. Okay, while I do that, I'll go ahead and go explain. So, obviously, you probably understand pre-production is just kind of like before you've actually started making the prototype, right? It could involve a lot of things, you know, planning and design, coming up with the, the, the uh, what art assets, maybe uh, the initial ones, or actually, a lot of times you don't have any for the prototype. You just use stand-ins, uh, and then you go to making the prototypes, so you've actually started to produce the game, and then an alpha test, whether it's closed or open, is basically where you're ready to do testing and you're beyond just a plain prototype, but you don't have all of the, or you know, the majority even, of the areas and weapons and enemies, or if the game even has weapons and enemies, you know, depending on the game type, uh, basically a lot of the core things are not, or a lot of the content is it's partial, like, n there's no majority that's there. Uh, I'm not explaining it that well, but that's basically what it means, and so that essentially means that going into a beta test is when you have the majority of the content uh, into the game, but you need to actually really rigorously test it, and polish it, and improve it, and finish and add some of the last few things, you know, or not last few things, but finish some of the areas and levels, so maybe you've got you know, six out of ten levels, or there's not an, you know, an actual number, but you have seven or eight out of ten, but you, but you have the majority of the areas and enemies and weapons and things of the content, basically, like I say, and you're ready to, to put it through all of its paces and whatnot. So it's a little bit more specific than I, than I originally had thought, and of course at some point uh, the beta test is finished and you actually go to release the game, or in the case of a lot of modern games, you just say F it, or the the, the guys at the top are breathing down your neck to release it because they want the money, and so you freaking have to put it out before it's actually really finished. You're, you're selling it, calling it release, but it's really a beta. You know, but anyway, that's a whole, like I say, a whole other topic. So again, the difference between an alpha and a beta is primarily that an alpha is obviously earlier in the development, but also there's just maybe not enough of the content uh, to really test the whole game, to try to play pretty much the whole game, you know. Um, and then, whereas a beta, you kind of have most of the, the game, or, you know, and you can kind of try to have playtesters go through the game, like the whole game. Uh, obviously things will be added and things will be changed, so it's not going to be the final product, but... Right, so, that's the difference between alpha and beta. Something to think about when you're making games, but even if you're just a person who buys games and plays games, really. 
Okay, so actually I've covered both of the topics, but I'm trying to think if there's there's I think there's only one more feature, maybe a couple features uh, that I that are new that I didn't actually get to show yet. Uh, one of those is really simple, so I can show that pretty soon. In the meantime, I'll play test a bit more and maybe try to find hack, uh, another terminal to hack because those are fun. I like doing those. Oh, and then I've got a very exciting thing to announce. Actually, I forgot to mention that earlier on in the video, but at the end of the video, which is going to be coming pretty soon, this is going to be a, a shorter devlog, uh, I'm going to have something very exciting to announce. And you know, actually, there's a, a, a terminal in this level that is one of the most difficult to, to hack. So it would be really interesting. I like to try it because almost surely I'm not going to get in, but, but it's possible. It's actually right over here. And it's kind of in a bad spot, too. Like, there's a lot of enemy uh, positions that could be around here, so it's kind of exciting. Let's see if we can get in. Ooh! ooh oh! I, d I failed just toward the end. I just almost got it, but not quite. Okay, I was playtesting, and I noticed that I've almost got enough money to purchase chainsaw hands. So I can't... I simply cannot finish this devlog without showing you guys the chainsaw hands because I, I showed that that was added to the game, but not really in the last devlog because I didn't actually have enough to buy it. Um, I'd play tested it myself, of course, a bit and everything. But right, so I'm going to try to make. I just need a bit more um, credits, and and I'll be able to buy the chainsaw hands, and then I'll have to find it in the shop, which won't be too difficult. I'm going to go to one of the larger uh, shopping areas uh, to do so. Oh, and there's a little guy in here. Same guy from before, actually, that gives you uh, random tips. I guess he travels around too, right? They shouldn't always be stationary. I mean, they always just stand there, though. <laughs> That's old school for sure. Also, this region here, uh, it's a little secret. It's a, l it's a higher chance here for a rust storm than any of the other regions that are currently in the game. Uh, but there's a, typically like not quite as many enemies, and the alert level doesn't raise quite as much. So it's it's a theme I'm going for where I'm thinking uh, forested areas are like it's harder for the robots to track you in those areas, right? And uh, also it's a short view distance here, a very thick red fog. And I thought, what a perfect place for a higher chance of rust storm. So you might actually see another rust storm in this place. Nice. Yeah, I just realized I have just over 16 uh, or Sorry, wait, how much? Oh, hang on, hang on. I need 20,000 for... Oh, I was thinking of something else. How much do I have? Okay, I don't think I... <laughs> Dang it! Uh, I think I have, like, just over 16,000, actually. I was thinking that's what it was, but it's 20,000 for the chainsaw hands. Which means I'm just going to have to do some more playtesting, and, and I don't necessarily have to keep all that in the video, but I'll do that until I can get enough money. Because that's... I only need about... What is that? 4,000? Or... Uh... 40,000? My math is not good. Anyway, it, it might not take me too long. Wait, did I say 40,000? No, it's tw I need 4,000. Wow. Okay. I'm tired. I've been doing too much game development, obviously. I'm, I'm about to die, too. That's alright. I just entered this level, so luckily I'll... Yeah, I get resumed right here. It's sort of like a checkpoint, but it doesn't save your game. But you always start back at the whatever uh, level... Or the start of whatever level you're on. Regardless of where you entered from. Oh man, my radiation level's kind of high. Oh, I don't even have 16,000, I have over 12,000. Oh, I'm thinking of, uh, what is it that's, oh, the plasma gun. That's what I've been playtesting a lot lately. Uh, and, well, that's been my goal usually when I playtest, is to get uh, the 12,000 to buy the plasma gun. So I can buy that again. Uh, or I can keep, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm good enough. Dang, this this place is a little bit difficult in hell difficulty. Which is, it? which actually, obviously, is what I'm going for. So that's good, that's good. It's, Kind of kicking my ass a bit. I could try to get get, get by these guys though, and, and this is intentional. I designed this map so you don't have to engage with much of it. If you don't want, you can just kind of try to sneak by and get to here uh, before you go further in that map, in this map, uh, to get to this safe zone. That's a better that's a better move than trying to, to fight a bunch of robots there. And, and I don't know if I'm gonna. I have to get I have to get enough for chainsaw hands. I said I would do it, so I have to do it. I just won't keep all that in the video. I'll just do some more playtesting uh, without recording here. Okay, I love when this happens. Okay. It didn't happen on these shelves, but all of these shelves. 
have nothing but basic cyber decks and blank discs. That's just because those are the most common, like the most common things you can find in a tech shop. So sometimes we'll just get nothing but that. In this case, we got a couple other items, but I've actually seen it where it's literally nothing but these two. Which is good at the beginning of the game, but might be kind of annoying later on. But by then you'll probably be in uh, areas that are deeper into the game. Alright, I did some robot hunting. Took me about 10, maybe 15 minutes. Uh, and I've got almost 20,000. So what I can do is go in here and sell the few data disks that I have, uh, the data merchant, and I'll definitely have enough, or almost surely. Uh, also, I can show you one of the other new things. This is just kind of a small thing, but it's also kind of a big thing. Previously, when you would click uh, E or press E on a save station, it would always save at slot one. Now you can choose which slot you want to save in. And there's up to eight slots. You just click one, and it'll save in that slot. Uh, be careful, though. It won't actually ask you if you're sure. But that is definitely a feature that I'm planning to add later on when I when I feel like you know doing that part where it'll it should prompt you after you click in case you misclick it you'd be like oh wait 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 I didn't mean to click that one uh, it'll actually probably say you want sure you want to save and slot whatever and you can say yes or no uh, as a confirmation but right now it just goes ahead and saves it in that slot don't expect your save games to be compatible between alpha versions uh, although sometimes that may happen but of course this is an alpha version so you know you can't really um, rely on that saves may not be compatible you know in the future alright so here in the data yeah I can definitely get enough here in the data merchant uh, or data selling room I can go ahead and sell this bolts incorporated data that alone gives me enough I've got uh, 600 from that I think I needed only 500 to have 20,000 so that I can buy the chainsaw hands <laughs> I'm overly excited for these things I've tested them out and I think they work pretty good it's basically just a faster melee weapon, but they're also great for grinding up uh, rusty barrels, rusty vehicles, rusty uh, crates, tanks, and stuff. So it's almost a utility thing as well as you could use it in combat, obviously. Uh, fighting robots up close, though, is a little is a little ballsy. Like, you, you can definitely do it, but, you know, it's, it takes the right sort of mindset. You might want to have a character with, like, some armor. All right, so now I just got to find one. Here we go. Okay, they don't have one. That's alright. I can just head back out and then come back down here and uh, it, it'll refresh. and have a decent chance it'll be there then. Alright, let's see if I can get unlucky enough to find it. Also, I'm going to go ahead and repair my armor. It's always a good idea. Well, actually, uh, it could have been bad if I had spent a little bit of credits to where I'd be below 20,000, but no. Ah, there it is. Yes. And what else do you got? Just out of curiosity. Very cool, very cool. All these work, by the way. I mean, uh, barring any bugs, um, uh, there may be bugs. I don't know. Um, I've tested them. I think they're bug-free right now. But yeah, these are all actual usable upgrades. The region module is interesting, though. It'll regen your health a little bit faster than normal. Normally, uh, which it only works though, like when you're outdoors, because that's actually the only time that health would regen. And health doesn't regen on hard mode or higher. Um, or actually, I think there's a little bit on hard. And we're talking extremely slow regen, you know, compared to most games. So you know. <laughs> This just gives you a little bit faster one. But all these do uh, actually do stuff. So um, here it is. Time for the chainsaw hands. I need 20,000. I have just barely over 20,000. And boom, there they are. Now this acts as a weapon, so I can obviously I can swap back to the rifle. But here they are. And they are uh, twice as fast as the wrench, but do, I think, the same amount of damage as the wrench. So they're you know, basically twice as much uh, DPS. Like I say, you can use them on enemies, but you can also use them to grind up rusty stuff, rusty crates and things, those things that you can break for loot. Uh, normally with a power wrench. Well, you can do it with a power wrench or with these. I'll show you some of that here. Uh, I've got to be careful, though. I don't want to rush a large group in melee. That <laughs> might turn out badly. But these guys will be easy. But if I'm too close when I kill them, the explosion damage does a little bit of damage to me too, so I gotta be careful. This is not... Yeah, I'll probably start with this from a distance, and then maybe I'll close... Oh, well, there's only two of them, but... I don't want to run across an open... Here we go. Now I can grind up these barrels here in a second. Too, so yeah. <laughs> That's actually more fun than I remember last time I tested. I'm really happy with these. I think, they, I think they're cool. Obviously, they might change. I might speed them up. Who knows? Uh, I might change the sound effect. 
I don't know. I took it from a free chainsaw sound effect and then modified it and, and like isolated part of the sound just so I'd get you know like a short repeatable sound that didn't sound too bad when it overlaps. I'm actually pretty satisfied with how it came out. Yeah, see, <laughs> see, you can use them on barrels and everything. Oh man, I had to have something silly like this. I mean, this game obviously, as you can tell, doesn't take itself too seriously, even though it is sort of a dark, you know, setting somewhat, you know, being post-apocalyptic. But it's different than most, as I've mentioned in previous devlogs. It's kind of a weird post-apocalyptic feel. And not not your average uh, post-apocalypse. I guess just I, I'm weird and I'm different. Really, is the main reason for that. Actually, if I'm being totally honest, uh, I'm actually I guess it's I'm kind of fortunate maybe in that way that uh, ooh, which one should we? I think Credbank's probably kind of low now. I'm gonna do Vartek. I probably won't get it anyway. Um, my art style, you know, it's, most of these textures are mine. Um, even the ones that are not mine, they're from a pack that I purchased and uh, you're allowed to modify. Uh, a pack called the Retro Texture Pack by Little Martian. I freaking love it. He actually did these, this brick texture here. Uh, but he, uh, that's just a basic texture, though. I mean, his, his other stuff is like amazing. Th this is really great for brick texture, but you know, you might look at him and go, just some bricks. Well, there's some really nice freaking bricks, dude. <laughs> but his other stuff is even better. And the pack comes with like over 80 textures or something. It's amazing. Um, but, you know, I've tweaked it a bit. Usually when I take one of his textures, from the pack, uh, the asset pack, I'll, I'll usually modify it just because I like to add more rust and stuff. And like, but like these other textures, like this sand, that's a very simple one, of course. But these rock textures and sand, I made all these myself. Um, these here as well, using Paint.net and a computer mouse. <laughs> if you can believe it, that's how I did all of it. These, this car, all of, that's how I do it. I just, I don't know, it works for me. I like it. Okay, so I showed you almost all of the new stuff. There's only one other thing, but I can't like trigger it manually so uh, you probably won't see it but it's just a small feature I can go ahead and explain it basically so in the beginning of the this devlog I showed how you can now choose a background which gives you small mechanical benefits you know some of them might give you a bit more armor more speed maybe more carrying capacity like the courier can uh, carry a little more ammo because like they're used to carrying stuff or something whatever uh, well also along with the background choice you make um, there's sort of a little small side benefit that you'll get throughout the game. It's not on a set schedule, but as you travel through the game, occasionally you will receive money from like past work. It'll be like you you got so many credits from your previous work as a courier or as an artist or whatever. And some uh, some of these backgrounds do pay a little bit better than others, so it's not guaranteed. It's not on a set schedule, but basically it's sort of like a random event when you enter a new area. There's a chance you might get a small paycheck from previous work that you theoretically did as a character. It's just another way to make money. And it's also kind of a, a neat little way to make money because it doesn't require you to do anything except explore. Because as you move from area to area, it just there's a chance each time you move to a new map, essentially, that you might get that little that little money, a little bit of money. Um, yeah. It may have happened during this devlog, and I didn't catch the message at the top, but probably not. I probably would have noticed it. But that's the other new thing. I think that's all the new stuff. Other than, you know, like tweaks and things, I've modified, you know, weapon rates and things a bit here and there, and damage, and the enemies a little bit. As always, you know, modified that, that, that boss enemy that I added. Oh, there's a, there's the another mission. There's the other mission. And he will definitely offer it to me now. i got a mission for you, if you're up for it. I need you to seek out and destroy a damaged robot commander in the Bleakstone Canyon Zone. He said the mission? Yes. Sweet. Now, I'm not actually... And then he says, uh... We appreciate it a lot. Also, I'll send you 5,000 credits as soon as it's done. Which is true, actually. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and show that actual mission, though. So you can do that yourself if you play the game. You can explore that. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just got to try, you know, explore the bleak zone zone until you can find the damaged robot commander and try to take him out. It's sort of like a little boss fight, you know. Well, kind of a big boss fight, actually, if you're underprepared. <laughs> but yeah, so the game has two missions, and that's one of them. I'll go ahead and save again. Now, that's it. That's pretty much the end for this devlog, but I did say I had a very exciting announcement to make at the end of the devlog. And while I do that, I'm going to try to hack the terminal in here, but it's a pretty difficult terminal, so I probably won't get it. So, big news! Exciting news! You can playtest the alpha yourself for free on Itch.io. This exact version that you just watched me play in this devlog 
is now available for free to anybody who wants to play this alpha version. Obviously, it's still an alpha version. Everything is subject to change. It needs more enemy uh, animations. It needs more sound effects. It needs more enemies. But there's already a lot of weapons, a lot of upgrades, a, a decent number of places you can explore and loot. There's plenty of things I haven't shown you in these devlogs as far as, like, uh, individual locations, like smaller parts like of the zone, you might find a underground facility, you know, in a in an area. You may find uh, a cave somewhere. You know, there's different things to discover that I haven't shown in these devlogs, obviously. Um, but you can play it now. Just check the description below the video. The uh, oh, I didn't make it, did I? The uh, alpha version 0 0.5 of Project Ruststorm is now an open alpha, and you can download it and play it for free. It's just a zip package, you just download it, unzip it, and then run the game. And I would love to hear what you guys think of it. I hope you enjoy it. I want to add so much more to this game, but a lot of the core mechanics are already in. Um, i got to make, like I say, a lot you know, more content, more areas. i got to flesh out things and improve things and polish things. But if you want to try it in this kind of sort of early stage, uh, I would love it. I would love it if you guys would. I'm really excited. As I make this game, to be totally honest... You know, uh, I'm feeling myself more motivated motivated by the idea of people playing it and having fun with it than I even am about if I can potentially ever sell copies of the game. You know, obviously I want to sell copies of the game. It's obviously. And it's kind of important that I do actually kind of need the money. But I'm really making a game that I want to play. I'm making it in a way that I want to make it just not taking itself too seriously just for fun and the more I do it the more I'm just like I want people to play this and enjoy it and hopefully it'll lead to a little bit of money eventually but I actually that's becoming like less of a priority for me and more of just like I just want people to play it like I, I know a lot of developers go through this and feel this um, it's very true that's what I'm definitely feeling so please if you do play it you can leave comments on the itch.io page uh, let me know what you think you can leave comments here obviously on YouTube and I'll Probably do another devlog in a week or two, assuming I have enough new stuff to show. And uh, thank you guys so much. Take care, and I hope you enjoy the alpha version of Project Ruststorm.